And now, my friends, a football story concerning penguins. And when, you, when I say the word penguins, what do you think of? The biscuits, obviously. The villain in Batman, maybe. Mr. Popper's Penguins, that great film with Jim Carrey. And maybe even Happy Feet and Morgan Freeman's Empire Penguins documentary. I now think, though, of the Mighty Penguins. The Mighty Mighty Penguins, a team founded by Alan Cochran, fine footballer in his own right, midfielder, winger, if I remember correctly. That's where he played many times for Spurs, he turned up for Reading, and, and then he, you know, the, 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 he walked away from the game, or the game walked away from him. I think he worked for a while as a firefighter, and then a cab driver. And because of working as a cab driver, he got involved, back involved in football in a rather different way with the penguins and not the creatures in Regent's Park Zoo. I've waffled around penguins a lot on this little chap, Alan. And Alan Cockrum joins us now, great player, and now the man behind the mighty penguins, associated with Brentford, of course. Can you tell us what makes this team remarkable? People may have heard this story, but I think it's a fantastic story. It's been bubbling around, I think, since 2017 when you started it. What, what, what are the penguins all about, please, Alan? OK, so we started in uh, 2017 with five children, um, I I done two days training with DS Active, and they they basically told me what I couldn't say because I'm prone to saying the wrong thing. Um, and then just put some flyers out. Five kids turned up in a gym. Uh, the first kid walked in, flapping his wing and doing bird noises. And I literally, honestly, Paul kicked all the cones away, and I winged it for 18 months. Um, and I winged it, but I learned along the way how the parents treated their own children, and every kid is has different needs and I learned from that aspect of it and fast forward six over six years now I've got 36 kids ranging from the youngest at four and a half and the eldest at 25. And, and they're united by a number of things they're all children um, they all love football but also there's something else very special which marks them out and I don't say special in any kind of patronising way and that's the reason why this team is I think unique tell us a bit about that if you would what, what prompted you to effectively work with Down syndrome children who are players? So like all footballers that retire and kind of left to their own devices, especially back in the day, they all become cab drivers. And well, I was, you were a firefighter, weren't you? I remember reading that no, once. Was, uh, that was after I was a cab driver. Right, okay. I became a firefighter. But I was a cab driver uh, out in sunny Surrey for, for a few months. And I had an old Volvo car, which was amazing because I got all the Gatwick runs and all that. But the controller said to me, oh, Al, can you pick up a kid and take him to school? And there's, there was some multi-drop-offs. The first kid gets in the carpool, and he sits in the front, and he's got Down syndrome. The next kid had Down. So I've got now a fleet of six kids, all with DS, sitting in my car. And I used to play house and dance music. And when I got to the, to the school, this kid would not get out the, before this track had finished. Right. Anyway, the name Phil, Phil, Phil and I become friends, and he'd always jump in the front of the car. And in the end, we used to go train. I'd take him training together. We'd get out of the car and have a kick around in the school. And we built this bond, 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 real deep bond, not just with him, with the children. But I left the cab company, went on to other things, and I get a control from the, uh, call from the controller. And he said, oh, I just want to let you know, Al, I don't know if you know, but, but Phil passed away of complications to do, to do with DS. I mean, it really, it really sort of um, set something off deep within mm. me, and I vowed uh, when I got more time that I'd explore it a little bit deeper. And then fast forward, say fifteen years, hence the beautiful Brentford Penguins. And it's not just the Brentford Penguins. I think there are now Emperor Penguins, Empress Penguins, and also a documentary which has been shown, I think, pretty much all over the world, certainly at the Tribeca Festival, founded originally by Robert De Niro. And that's a remarkable... I mean, if in that short space of time, you've captured the imagination of the world with this project, Sir Alan. Yeah, it's, it's been probably the last uh, 12 to 14... It's really since August. Um, they, they started the doc documentary filming last, last month, March, for three or four months. They was around my house... And they viewed it, they, they picked three children, Louis Miles, the director, and Ahmed, they picked three kids out of the children to set, tell their story. And, and then my story is kind of intertwined within it. It's beautiful. It's very open, honest, and raw. Um, and then from that, that's when we got Tay flown out to New York to the Tribeca and in the De Niro suite. And that was the very first time that I'd watched the, the film. Um, and I had a, a DS kid next to me on my left, which is Special K, 
Uh, she has a multitude of problems. She was sitting next to me and my wife the other side, and I and, and she's just put her arm around me, the kid, and just said, "Ow, oh, everything's going to be all right." Because the, oh. the film was stunning. It's stunning. Yeah. You'll have to you'll have to watch it, mate. I'm I'm lucky enough to have seen it because I'm a member of a streaming service like linked to BAFTA and all that kind of stuff. So I've seen it only on a small you screen. Seen I've seen I've seen it. We, I'm, I'm, and we're hoping to play a clip from it in the program as well. But I wanted to play a little chunk of an interview we found with the director Louis Miles, who's made he's worked in sporting projects before, and yeah. again it's that thing where sometimes uh, uh, the, the right project meets the right creative force and you get this remarkable documentary. Here's Louis Miles, director of Mighty Penguins, talking about how he first heard about this story. I read a, uh, uh, an article in The Guardian about Alan and the Penguins and I knew I had to make the story. So I found his number and I called him up and we connected straight away and then this, this beautiful film and got part of this community, it was, it was amazing. And it is an amazing documentary because, but like all documentaries, it can't really sum up the scope of what you've done. I mean, there must have been challenges along the way. You're, you're obviously a very positive person. You're somebody who's immersed in the world of football and obviously very good with children of all types and adults as well. But were there difficulties along the way? I mean, were you kind of getting through on the skin of your teeth at times, Alan? Um, the difficulties are, are massive, as in there's such a scope of disability. I, I really hate using that word, but there's a scope of disability with NDS. So the kids have anything from 20 to 80% comprehension and 75% of my children are non-verbal, yeah. even though I know what they're saying. I know what they're communicating. And with DS children, when they're trying to communicate to you, they're actually trying to say something. So you, you just make that point of listening. Um, as far as difficulties in the coaching is concerned, I'm absolutely blessed with the amount of fantastic volunteers and my wife and friends that really help out and know all the kids and the parents. And the truth of the matter is I knew that I had to flip my natural way of coaching. So I was used to coaching teams to win football matches and I looked at all the children and because I had an open, bo uh, open door policy and had such a vast array of children, I spun it on its head and said, I'm not going to build a team, I'm going to build, build a community. And the young kids are going to learn from the old kids and the old kids are going to teach the younger kids. So they see a progression throughout the team, number one. And that's part of the team. But I, I, I honestly believe, Paul, that the, one of the most important sides to it is the parents. The parents are a second part, another team on their own, and they can come to us and they don't feel like they have to explain their children. Or, and they can come and there's people that understand their own problems because the other parents have that as well. So it's something that we're very proud of. But listen, the the joy and the uh, beauty of the children complete, completely outweigh all the difficulties that comes along with that, mate. So I'm, I'm blessed. I'm very blessed. Now, the film's been hailed by Mark Camone. He's one of our leading film critics. I know Mark quite well. He, he described it as being most utterly remarkable and utterly life-affirming, which it is. And it's led to a bit of a, a media blitz on you and the Penguins. I, I happened to catch you on this morning with Alison Hammond and Dermot. And one of the lads took a shine to Alison, did he not? Yeah, that's, that's Louis, or as we call him, Lou's views. So at the end of every training session, he interviews all the kids. And he's got his special gold microphone and, and we make sure that all the kids communicate and get a chance to speak no matter what. And Louis was on there this morning and he ended up, I, w I was petrified at one point because I, I know some of his chat lines and I'm thinking, don't say that one. I'll jump in if you say that yeah. one. Uh, and then fortunately he said the really good ones that we work on together. And then he asked him, asked her to marry him, which she, uh, which she uh, duly accepted. And I think the marriage is, is this year sometime. Which is, uh, I'm going to get an invite from it because I know Alison Hammond as well. Um, the other thing is, in, in the course of, you know, reading up for this and, and you know, following your career, I've been at a bit of a distance because I'm a West Ham fan. And I don't know yeah. if you know, West Ham managed to beat Spurs quite comfortably last night. I don't know if you were aware of that fact, but let's move away from that. And I hadn't realised that you've also had your own problems, uh, kind of mental and perception problems, because you've been diagnosed with ADHD. Is that right? Yeah, it was. Um, so I, I've, I've always known my brain worked in a certain way, but the jobs that I've had has masked or been beneficial to, to me. So whether it be a football coach or working as a firefighter, my, I don't want to say it like that, but, but the, the, the stuff never come to the forefront. And when it hit me was COVID because I was running three football teams and overnight I lost absolutely everything. And obviously I lost the Penguins um, and I was left sitting in a room not knowing what to do. And I had to address my own demons. 
And the honest truth is, Paul, when the film come along, it was really cathartic for me because I knew that the parents were honest, I knew the kids were honest, and I thought the only way I can do this is to be honest on camera. Um, and it really helped me, and it made me address sort of my my um, you know my own mental state at the time. Uh, and I was diagnosed three years ago, um, and yet it's it's been amazing for me because it's explained a lot of things along the way. And I think the older generation, you was never dealt with any mental health issues and things like that. And I think the most important thing that come, that come out of it for me was through COVID that I learned how to handle myself and I learned how to be comfortable in my own skin and I didn't have to be the life and soul of a party all the time. And, and then once you understand that side of yourself, it makes it much easier to address everyone else and people around me and my wife has been amazing. So, And has the increased focus been difficult? I only ask because I know also you were at some event or some do and you got presented with an award by somebody very special in the world of football that you didn't know was coming along. David Beckham turned up, didn't he, with his boy Romeo, I think. Yeah, we was, we was told to have the kids at the GTEC to do some training for the Who Cares Wins Awards, the Sun Awards. And um, I knew I was in the top three uh, going into it. But the funniest thing is, I think I quoted it in The Guardian, was that I, I smelt Izzy Mayaki aftershave. And I'm going, what's this smell? This is lovely. I've had a bottle of that. And as I've turned around... Uh, uh, David's there with Romeo, and it's a bit like a Santa Claus moment when you're a kid looking at Father Christmas. Because <laughs> I'm thinking, and then he's pulled out the trophy, Paul, and I'm like, hang on a minute, so hang on, you're saying that I've won, you're David Beckham, this is Romeo, and I've got all these kids around. Um, but the, the truth of the matter is he was fantastic. He was with us two hours. You could ask him any questions. He had pictures taken with everyone. Um, and then he sent us a lovely uh, Miami shirt. Romeo sent us a Brentford shirt, all signed with a lovely letter, and we wrote letter back to him. Uh, so that was an amazing, yeah, it was an amazing, amazing experience. And we're kind of still in touch with them, which is lovely. I mean, it's a remarkable story, folks, and it's told, you know, a, a chunk of it's told in the documentary. We're going to play the trailer in just a moment. I did want to ask you, though, are people still helping out? Do you need volunteers? Do you need funds, for example? How does a team work from, from week to week and, and year to year? Yeah, we're, we're kind of... Ha- I mean, everyone thinks, because we've got a bit of notoriety in the last few months, the money's coming in and stuff. It's not true. We have, we've never put out for a sponsor or anyone, anyone to help us. But after Christmas, we're really in the process of getting some good sponsors behind us. And also, my dream has been for years to have my own indoor facility for all my three teams. Also, I want an education program for the, the DS kids because the problems that they have going from school to school, especially when they're 16, that they have to go to college, and then 18 when they leave, there's nothing for them. So I want to integrate them within the... Uh, within our programme, and they can come and work within the charity. Right. So that's a really important vision for me. Um, we've got some good people interested in, in what we're doing, and hopefully after Christmas it'll all come to fruition. Now, I was about to come in for this interview, I you know, t- t- jumped out just there for a cup of tea, and somebody passing by, been at a party last night, sh- shouted to me something about Cambridge University and you. Is that right? You linked to the Cambridge University football team? Yeah, I was, it was what I did. Uh, I, was, I had three teams. I had, U- I had UCL... University College London, then I went to Cambridge, and then I went to uh, GKT, which is uh, Guy St. Thomas's and King's, the um, hospital teams. And I run those for like five or six years and then give it all up about 10 weeks ago to concentrate on the on the uh, all right. foundation that we formed. So, yeah, so it's all guns blazing, mate. All guns. Well, listen, we're going to play the trailer now. It's called The Mighty Penguins. It's a fantastic watch. I mean, you know, I blub at anything, but I certainly blubbed at this film at times. But also, in the end, Mark Kermode's right, it's life-affirming, very moving. At the heart of it, you know, it's a beating heart because there's lots of people providing core puzzles to keep it go, but it's the man himself we've just been speaking to, Alan Cockrum. They're a great player. Now the man behind, the inspiration behind The Mighty Penguins themselves. There's a women's team. There's the Emperor Penguins or whatever. Who do, they, who do they actually play? Who do your mob play when they're playing outside the the club itself? So we played, so the Emperors are over 55 walking football team with uh, with people with mental health and I've got an over 40s Empresses team for women uh, walking football and we, uh, the women played in a a women's tournament a couple of months ago and the men we, we played over at Watford training facility but more, it's more than the games, though, Paul, to be honest. Sure. It's, that we, it's that we meet every week and play together, but we do events together outside, and all the teams mix together. So it's not just the Penguins. I've got coaches that come in and help from both teams. 
and that I encourage everybody to be part of each other. So now I've built my own community with over 100 participants. All from that cab ride all those years ago. Now, that's the fantastic yeah, Alan Cockrum. And we're going to end now with the trailer for the film, The Mighty Penguins. It's, it's about to turn up. It'll be on TV eventually. So we'll try and catch it now. It'll be shown at limited screenings around the country. Keep an eye out for it, because it really is a must-watch documentary. Louis Miles, the director. Here's the trailer. And huge thanks to Alan Cockrum. Keep up the good work, mate. We'll talk again, I hope, Alan. What a great bloke. Merry Christmas to you and all the team. Yeah, first one I've said this year. And here's the trailer for The Mighty Penguins. I've reached where I wanted to take those kids and give them the joys of football. It's about the wider community, it's acceptance, and understanding that these children are a gift. Oh, yeah, you got out that one, didn't you? Yeah. Is a love, an honesty, a beauty, that I think as human beings we lose. Good to see you. Good to see you. Thank you. What are you doing, Thank you, mate. Everyone's looking for the perfect picture, and I think we can easily get swept away in that. Please give a big round of applause for Alan Cockrum and the Brentford for Penguins, everyone. That pure emotion of joy, happiness and love, all bundled into one for an hour and a half and more, is what we all live for. To quote Sir Alex Ferguson back in the day, football, eh? Bloody hell. It's a fantastic documentary. What a lovely chap he was. And you heard that interview right here with me, Paul Russell on Talk Sport and Talk Radio, where we're live till five.